Welcome to the Coach Sing Show, offering you the latest creative content marketing tips to help you work less, earn more, and help more people. Are you a coach singer yet? Join the community where the world's best coaches, therapists, authors, and speakers come to discover the latest industry trends and partner with other like-minded professionals. Go to coachsing.com slash community to join. And now, here's your host, Doug Foresta. Hello, and welcome back to The Coaching Show. This is your host, Doug Foresta, of course. My guest today is Matthew Pollard. We're going to talk about finding your niche, sales, systemization, and more, so stay tuned. I know you get a lot out of this episode. I'll say a little bit about Matthew and bring him right on. With the five multi-million dollar business success stories to his name and industries as vastly different as telecommunication, construction, and nationally accredited education, Matthew has been characterized as true differentiation, niche marketing, and sales systemization powerhouse. Just like everyone else, he's had to overcome many hardships throughout his life, some perhaps harder than others. Due to a disability, Matthew had a reading speed of a sixth grader at the age of 18, resulting in introversion and an extreme lack of confidence. In 2007, he fell victim to a glassing into the face, which took 26 stitches, painful plastic surgery, and more than five years to heal. While others may have let these misfortunes hold them back, Matthew used them to learn and turned the, the, turn them into advantages that he now shares with others. Today, his acquisition strategies have been effectively used in obtaining clients from multinational corporations, uh, award-winning franchises, luxury automobile brands, leading medical institutions and law associations, as well as national Olympic and premiership football teams. His strategies have also gained huge market penetration in small to medium market and medium enterprise. One of many such examples was a new business that was starting in a highly competitive market and within just three years generated over 3,500 business clients. He's been the gracious recipient of the prestigious Young Achiever Award by Melbourne Business Awards and has changed the lives of more than 5,500 participants from the hardworking solopreneur to executives in large multinational corporations. These accomplishments with Reed, like a lifetime of achievement, were all accomplished by Matthew before his 30th birthday. And his favorite saying is that you decide every moment of every day who you are and what you believe in, and you get a second chance every second. And I encourage you to check out, he has a, a new, brand new podcast that I, I definitely encourage you to to check out called the Better Business Coach Podcast. Uh, you can learn all about that and about Matthew at matthewpollard.guru. That's matthewpollard.guru. Matthew Pollard, thank you so much for joining me on The Coach Thing Show. I thought where we could start would be to talk about this the idea of a niche market and why is it important to find a niche market? Well, I guess the simplest way to answer that is to talk about a story of one of my one of my past uh, businesses that I've worked with, and and that really is that I, I worked with an education uh, company, uh, as I said, that was successful. We it successfully acquired three and a half thousand clients in just three years, and most new education facilities take years and years and years just to get a few hundred clients because people want to study with a place that provides them high levels of education and has huge amounts of credibility. So that level of success was phenomenal. And the reason why we achieved it is we went after a niche that nobody else was focused in. So as opposed to offering the message that everybody else offers to the group of people that everybody else markets to, we had a completely different message to a whole different demographic of people. And we created a whole opportunity of no competition for ourselves. Now, sure, people started to work in our niche about 12 months later, but can you imagine having no competition in any sort for about 12 months? It's, it's, it's an unbelievable opportunity for growth. Yeah. And look, I've done that. I've done that in telecommunications. I've, I've done it in so many other industries for my clients. And the thing that I always say is, what can you do that other people aren't doing? Who can you sell to that other people aren't selling to? See, a common thing for most people that, if you like, especially are technicians in their own business, they want to tell you what the industry is doing and what everybody else is doing. And that's what they do. They replicate that because they've grown up in that industry and as a result, they just provide the same services that they've grown up in and that they've been used to providing. The problem with that is that they're also competing against the people that taught them, other people that were taught by other people. It's a horrible thing, and it forces you just to compete on price. So what's great about a person like myself coming in is a lot of the times 
I don't understand anything about your industry. So I learn about your products and the services that you offer. And I almost don't want to hear how you currently marketed it or who you currently sell to. What I want to do is focus on the possibilities of who it could be sold to and the possibilities of how it could be done. And generally, the ideas that I come up with are so, so different to everybody else. And what I've done through my courses and my training is I've helped to break that down for people so that they can start to look outside their comfort zone, which, as we know, that's where the magic happens, and actually start to target demographics that they may have never thought of before that could be so much more lucrative and so much more easily to grow in than anything else they've done before. One of the things that it's funny, I hear there's so much resistance in my experience of talking to to coaches, speakers, and authors, and they have this resistance, and I hear this over and over again. I'd love to get your take on it, where people say, but if I choose a niche, aren't I limiting myself because now I'm I'm narrowing it down to a specific group of people instead of everybody. Well, you've got two options. You could be everything to everybody, just like everybody else, or really nobody to no one. Or you can be somebody to a small group of people. And, you know, I can, the best explanation I can give you, and I've just written an article on this actually, which is, you know, if I sold ice and I was trying to sell ice to everybody and my message was the best ice, well, I'm going to blend in with every other company selling ice. And ice is ice. So the price that you can charge for ice is going to be the only determinant on whether or not somebody uses me, unless I'm a very good salesperson and I've got a great relationship. And that's a whole other story. You can always get people that can sell ice to Eskimos, to use the pun. Mm-hmm. However, why not start with an advantage of a group of people that really just want to buy off you? What if I decided that I wanted to be the best shredded ice in the snow cone industry. Now all of a sudden, I've got people telling me that they want to buy my ice for snow cones. They do research on which is the best snow cone ice, and all of a sudden they're realizing that I'm the only one in the market that really specializes in this. Now I've got people calling me and asking me when I can provide my products and services to them, as opposed to sending an email out to five people getting prices and just picking the cheapest one. What we're really trying to do is separate ourselves from the crowd because if you can imagine, the crowd is targeting everybody and there are a million people searching and there are a million people looking for clients. What I'm looking for is the five or six or a hundred or or a thousand people that are looking for something more unique and those people won't look anywhere else but me. There's no competition. There's nobody selling to them but me. That gives me such an advantage. That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely, I that's such a powerful message for listeners and an important thing for us to keep in mind. You actually also touched on another piece, which was that people ask me is how many people do I need? You know, how big a following do I need to create a a growth business? And and so maybe you can say a little bit about that as well. Well, what's what's funny is that you know I do content marketing and I've got a podcast like yourself and. I do, I do all of that because what I'm trying to do is give back. But the real answer is, if you're truly differentiated, you don't need to go and have such a huge network because you're not speaking to everybody and therefore trying to get noticed in the crowd. You speak to a unique group of people and you've just got to look for where those people hang out. But secondly, I find that I get a lot of my clients from networking events because I'll be sitting in a room talking to somebody like yourself and there'll be 12 other coaches in the room. And when I say I specialize in differentiation and niche marketing and helping people stand out from the crowd, they're like, hold on a second, what do you do? Okay, that's not general coaching. Explain to me exactly what you do because I've heard the same coaching story about how I need to systemize my business so many times. But what you're telling me is different. Talk to me about it. And all of a sudden, they're pushing me for information and they're starting to tell me about all of their problems. I've got clients. Like, if I'm in a room with four people, I've got four potential clients, four potential clients, and I'm likely to close on a substantial number of those because they're hounding me. And you'd be surprised how many business coaches I have as clients just because they want advice on how they can stand out. People say you need to go and write a book to stand out, and that's that's fine. I'm I'm doing the same thing, and I've got several books that are being published this year. However, that's a lot of effort without starting with the absolute basics of what is my unique skill. The other thing that happens is you'll get so many coaching clients if you're sending the same message out as everybody else, 
And those clients that you get may want help in sales and marketing, and what if you've got no experience in that? Then all of a sudden you're a fish out of water, and they're going to tell your network that they should probably try a different coach. So I'm actually attracting the right clients to me where I can give them them the best outcome, the most successful opportunities. Basically, I can provide what I love doing and that I know I can get success with. And the message I'm giving out is if you're in a situation where you need help with this, come to me. If not, go see somebody else because those people might be better at helping you than I will at those specific situations. I mean, the benefit right. that I have is that because I've also been a successful business owner in my own right and I've coached people on businesses as well, obviously I can provide a full, full suite of things. That doesn't mean that that's how I market. I market based on niche marketing, differentiation and sales. People come in as clients with that and then what I do is I then give them the whole suite of back end because the last thing you want to do is have a massively rapid growing sales business yet don't have the systems and, and, and processes to support that growth. So you need to be able to coach across all of it. However, the first message I send is telling people uniquely what differentiates me from everybody else. And that's obviously very powerful because I, I think of one of the biggest challenges in coaching is, to me, I, I think of especially the word life coach. You know, if you say, well, I'm a life coach, people almost just tune out <laughs> because there's, it, it's just such a generic term. Exactly right. And it, it's funny, I've, um, as, as you mentioned in your introduction, I'm launching a, a podcast, or, well, actually, by the time this airs, it will be have launched, uh, called Better Business Coach Podcast, which is available at Better Business Podcast, sorry, Better Business Coach Podcast dot com. And in the initial sessions, I actually talk about the fact that most people will say when they're asked, "What is it you do?" They'll say, "I'm a coach" or "I'm a life coach," and the conversation just dies. People say, "Oh, yes." yes. And you know, sometimes they may have had a bad experience with a coach, or you know, there's just no reason for them to continue that conversation. It's just it's, if you're a coach. I know that this is personal to you and I know that you believe and you can help them in substantial ways. Just like an insurance person, uh, sorry, an insurance salesperson can. That doesn't mean you want to talk to them. However, if they talk about a disaster that happened and they explain to you all the problems those people had and that their job is making sure that that doesn't happen to other people, then all of a sudden you're like, well, explain to me, what do you mean these people got hurt and how can I prevent it happening from um, to me? Like It just turns the tables. And what I always suggest to people is that you don't start by talking about what you do. And I'm sure as a coach, when you teach sales, you say, talk about the benefits of the product when you're out selling it, not the features. Being a coach is a feature. It's what you do. It's the product name, but it's not what you actually achieve. It's not the outcome that you get for the customer. It's not the liberating experience that a client will find when they first go into their business uh, the next day and all of a sudden this, their processes, their systems are working and they can finally feel comfortable to step away from their business or move from an S to a, what Robert Kiyosaki talks as a B. So there's so many things that a coach can do. A life coach can help people walk away from all of the stresses of their life or come to terms with them or work out what their goals are. There are so many things that people can do but a life coach doesn't sound exciting at all but if you know you say you know you know how most people don't have any goals and they really struggle with where they're heading and then they find 10 years goes by and they're still in the same spot they are now do you know anyone like that you, you do okay well what I do is I help people figure out where they want to be so that they can more successfully get where they want to go and something simple to that like that that people are going to be more likely to identify with as opposed to, I'm a life coach. Oh, okay, no worries. Well, I do this. That's the end of the conversation. That makes so much sense. And, of course, as you're saying that, I'm thinking, well, once I get that down, I can use that in my videos. I can use that in my podcast. I can use that on my blog. That you know, Once I get that niche down, obviously, I can use any content, that, any content strategy at all to, to share that as opposed to, I'm a life coach. Exactly right, and you've got to understand how important this is because I'll give you an example. I, I posted an article on Entrepreneur Magazine going back last year, and I got a, a huge amount of emails and Twitter followings and Facebook followings 
from that article. However, most of the people that contacted me responded with, I read your article and I noticed that you specialize in niche marketing and differentiation. I've always wondered whether or not I could differentiate because I'm really struggling to get clientele to buy into my message. What exactly is it you do? And then all of a sudden, I'm talking about what I do. However, they've already told me that they're interested. However, right. imagine if it said, I'm a coach, just like every other article that they've read. It's just going to blend in. They may add me because they like hearing about my articles, but they probably would never email me because there's nothing unique about my message. It's just the same as they're used to seeing from everybody else. Yeah, I mean, as you say that too, the difference too for me is when you talk about this is what I do, all of a sudden I'm sort of thinking about how you can help me versus when you say I'm a coach, it's, yeah, it's so generic now. It's like saying I'm a human, you know, or I'm male, I'm, <laughs> I'm whatever, well, you know, just describing well, myself. I wear pants, you know. Well, it is exactly like that. However, it sends a horrible other message, which is not only am I describing myself just like everybody else, but I'm about to sell you something because everybody knows the word coach now means I'm going to talk to you about what your problems are on the basis of trying to convert you into a client because everybody knows 95% of business coaches, their main problem is they don't get enough customers. So by introducing yourself as a coach, you may as well be saying, I'm going to try and sell you something now, as opposed to saying, what I am is I'm a niche marketing differentiation and sales specialist or do you know how so many people have start up their businesses with dreams of having, you know, their own mark on the world and to work their own hours and, you know, to be their own boss? Yet for some reason, they don't get the clients behind them and they struggle with this and they struggle with that. And as a result, you know, they kind of lost faith in themselves. Do you know anyone like that? Okay, you, are, you do. Okay, well, basically what I do is I create niche marketing differentiation and sales strategies to really flip that around so that they have a core demographic of people that they speak to. And when they actually get those people contact them, they have a locked down process as opposed to saying, uh, yeah, I sell, I sell sales coaching or, sorry, I sell business coaching. Do you want to buy from me? Which everybody knows doesn't work, yet no one spends any time learning how to fix that situation. It's like they learn their functional skills for 10 years, yet when it comes to selling the products and services, which is the lifeblood of their business, they spend no time actually learning how to phrase those 10 sentences that they need to actually translate it into a customer. Well, I'm really excited about, I love what you shared here today. I'm really excited about your podcast. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about the Better Business Coach podcast and, and what, it's, what it's about? Definitely. So Better Business Coach podcast, it came from the idea that what I, I have a lot of people ask me about how to be a better coach. So while primarily I'm a sales niche marketing and differentiation specialist, I also work with clients on all of their products, uh, sorry, all of their systems, their processes, their visions, it, basically everything, staff engagement, motivation, because over the last 10 years, I've realized that you can't coach just on those facets without making sure that all of that system is working, or all of a sudden you just have lots of unhappy customers and really, really stressed staff when you get this rapid growth that I've got the name, the rapid growth guy, from always being able to achieve for my client. So what I've done, because I'm a systemization person, is I've created templates that I use for every one of my client sessions to help me run sessions in the most engaging ways. I like to believe that you don't have to do anything more than once. So if you've got a customer that's asked a question, and you need to run a session on it, then systemize it into a worksheet so you can run that every single time. And what Better Business Coach Podcast is, is it's providing people with the ideologies, the training, and all of the worksheets that I've spent over a decade creating and perfecting and providing that to coaches so that they don't have to do all the work. Because I know how hard it is to A, go out and look for clients, then do all the reading that you need to that you need to do just to make sure you can answer all of your clients' questions plus create the worksheets and templates to, to have those engaging sessions. It's why people run to franchises. It's just too much work. And what yeah. I'm doing now is I'm providing people access to all of that. You'll be able to go to matthewpollard.guru or betterbusinesscoachpodcast.com 
after one of the sessions that I run. And if it's a worksheet, you'll be able to download that actionable worksheet to use with your clients straight away. You'll be able to listen to ideologies and trainings. So if you have a session that you need to run with a client, you can just pop it in your ears, listen to it on the way out to the client or in the way into work and be completely prepared for that session. I'm just trying to cut out all of the work so that they can just go back to doing what they're best at, and that is helping clients. There's also some sales strategy in there and some marketing strategy in there because, let's be honest, if you don't have clients actually paying for you, then it's going to be a pretty bad podcast for you because you're going to learn all the things you can do to help a client without actually having clients to help. So I've started with how, what do you say when you're networking, which we've covered off on a little bit today, plus you know, how do you translate it into a customer by using a business needs analysis, which is what I use, and some, you know, choice words that you can use to, you know, get them, get the customer putty in your hand and then translate them into a weekly or monthly coaching client. I love it. Matthew Pollard, you have shared such great content with us today. I so appreciate you coming on and sharing your words of wisdom with us. You're more than welcome, Doug. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Same here. And I want to remind people again, uh, then go to MatthewPollard.guru. And can you give them one more time the um, the link for the direct link to your new podcast? Sure. It's BetterBusinessCoachPodcast.com. Thank you. So uh, I want to thank Matthew Pollard for joining me. And I also want to remind all of you that nothing you've heard here is going to make any difference in your life unless you get out there and take some action. So go out there and make it happen. Till next time, this is Doug Foresta at The Coach Thing Show. Thanks for listening to The Coaching Show. Need help getting your book out of your head and onto paper? Need help marketing your books or speaking engagements? We can do it for you. Go to coachsing.com to learn more. Are you a coach singer yet? Join the Coach Singers community where the world's best coaches, therapists, authors, and speakers meet. You'll get exclusive access to private mastermind calls where you can get instant marketing help from industry experts. Plus, we'll help you forge deals and partnerships with other like-minded professionals. Go to coachsing.com community to join now.